21st century is about visuality. Everything needs to be beautiful. Meanwhile, we forget that architecture and building environment is affecting us also through other senses. We as human beings, we spend 90% of our time in the enclosed environment. By 40, we spend 36 years indoors. So we need to make sure that people feel happy, people feel healthy, because happy and healthy people are the good employees of our clients. If we look back sort of 60 years and think about the revolutions that happened in office design, the architectural form often ended up closing down to create dark spaces, in effect sort of inhibiting the penetration of light to those who were left in open plan in the middle of the buildings. As the telephone became an object on everybody's workstation, you started to see a sort of change in the planning regimes to office layouts. Then the electric typewriter developing memory and then into word processing. Suddenly office planners were responding to the needs of those technological advances. It wasn't probably until the 90s that allowing greater glass facades to enable the light to penetrate for everybody to enjoy. Of course then in 2000 and into 2010, the advancement of the tablet computer really has enabled us to open up the design of workplaces. So well-being in the workplace is really about an organisation understanding well-being in its widest sense. So fundamentally falls into two very simple baskets. The environmental aspects, the space that the employee finds themselves in, and then probably the social connection that come out of just being around each other. So people-centric offices fundamentally focus on the employee first and then allow everything almost like a sort of stone in a pond to ripple outwards from there. You have that sort of sense of the employee being in charge of their use of the space, rather than the organisation imposing a blueprint of how it expects space to be used. In modern era, the employees are the greatest assets of any company, and hence providing an environment that caters for well-being, comfort, is absolutely critical to any workforce of any service company. When we are designing a new building now, we need to think of what will the requirements be five to 10 years from now. You incorporate data scientists, you incorporate behavioral psychologists to focus on the new trends so that when they come to deliver it, it's the top of the market with all the features and functions that will be needed five to 10 years ahead. We try to understand what will be the needs of our future users. We look at what's happening around the plot. We see what's missing. We're looking for something that we can build upon. Good design is not only about the visual part, it's making sure that the space enhances the well-being of the users. We want to make sure that they will be well, which is healthy body, healthy mind, that they will be efficient, that they will be inspired, which means the space will boost their innovativeness and collaboration and that they will be responsible, which is sustainable and socially responsible design. Access to external space and views are a major benefit to employees in, in buildings like this. This is a fantastic example of all the ingredients in one mix because you have a lot of biophilia, amazing view, amazing accessibility. And a multi-use space, right? So absolutely. people out here collaborating, people out here having lunch, getting fresh air. Ab absolutely, absolutely. If we ask ourselves why is there this sudden sort of interest in corporate well-being, employee well-being, Society has got a much greater awareness and technology has kept sort of pace with that in terms of informing us about the impacts of those decisions that we make on a daily basis around our actions and therefore our well-being. Technology is important in uh, all aspects of our lives and the offices are not different. At Edgware we designed a lot of smart technologies which are helping well-being in the offices for the users. This is one of the, our visual interface. You can use it for the searching the information, so you can use it for the checking the quality of the environment in the meeting rooms, and you can check it for wayfinding features. Smart technologies goes beyond just the changing the light and the temperature, but you might have the insights about how the meeting rooms are populated, what are the interactions among the people. You know precisely where the people are and how they are using the space, which is allowing you to come up with the optimizations and the potential changes in the design. When it comes to offices, it's not only about the physical space, but it's about the culture that supports the well-being too. So, for example, the services are e-bikes, concierge, yoga. My favorite, personally, is street food, though. <laughs> uh, can I please get one of those halloumi burgers and sweet potato fries? Thank you. We want to take care of the people, because people is the future. Every single person deserves not only healthy space, but also a space that will reduce their stress, 
and boost their productivity at the same time. I love this space for like feeling almost like a place where you could hang out. It's, it's a workspace, but still you feel really relaxed. So thanks to the positive experience I'm having here, I'm energized, I'm happy and I'm good to go. So that's what I appreciate the most. Organizations who respect their employees build environments that enable the employee to profit, to be the best possible version of themselves that they can be. So if you can create that sort of virtuous circle, then you've got happy employees working inside a happy organization, and in theory, therefore, happy customers externally.